Hey y'all, it's Kobe R. Rice and I'm back again for another weekly creative update. So I actually missed my update last week and I'm really sorry about that. I had the time, but to be really honest with you guys, I just, for whatever reason, just didn't feel like it. And on top of it, I had come to you guys on Thursday, June 28th with a birthday gratitude, happy birthday, like to me. <laughs> I guess, with this podcast, which sounds a little narcissistic, but it actually was the complete opposite because I was thinking about all the things in my life that I had really overcome and achieved up to that point, but mostly I was considering the things that I need to be grateful for in life. So it was kind of a internal podcast, emotional podcast, but also like an externalized. This is These are the things that I need to keep my eye on and pay attention to and appreciate in my life. And since I had posted that podcast, literally like smack in the middle of that week, when Monday came around, I felt as though I didn't really have enough or as much to report to you guys. Um, Except I will tell you that I definitely, those four days from my birthday to Sunday, I certainly like treated myself, um, took care of myself, and that was really wonderful and great. And so I'm now I'm back again, finally, after a week and four days of being away. And I just wanted to give you guys yet another weekly update on the things I've been doing since June 28th, all the way up until yesterday, uh, Sunday, July 8th. So honestly, I have to be honest with you guys. I was flying pretty high in a good way, on my natural high, um, pretty much until July 1st. And actually throughout most of the week after, I'm not going to lie. But in the past couple of days, I've been feeling a little blue. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that for whatever reason, I feel like I'm not doing enough. Don't even ask me why or how I could even feel this way, especially after the first six months of this year personally have been has been like gangbusters for me in all areas of life. And again, I have so much to be grateful for. And I've only lived out essentially the first week of the second half of the year, and I'm already like self-criticizing. And I don't really know why that is. I think that I have a certain place that I want to be, per se. Sorry for the long pauses, but I want to make sure I'm thinking before I, before I speak. I have a certain place that I want to be in my career. And I know that it's gonna take day after day after day, week after week after month after year of daily small increments and steps. And I make a lot of steps and a lot of strides every single day, um, leaps and bounds actually towards my goals. But I always feel as though I'm not moving quickly enough and I'm not getting enough done. Especially where the growth of my businesses are concerned with regard to my press, my production house, and the Bohemian Badass. And so this feeling that I can't be all things all the time, getting everything done at once, sometimes can be super overwhelming. And this is especially true when I have my case of comparisonitis, um, which I really try to avoid. And for those of you who are not familiar with the term comparisonitis, It's basically when you are trying to achieve a certain point in your creative career and you see another author or filmmaker or business owner or whoever reflects where you want to be, who's doing exactly what you want to do and doing it well and getting recognized for it. And, you know, they're kicking ass and taking names and their career is blowing up and In some cases, some of us, every time I try to record a podcast, honestly, it's like this fly or whatever is all up in my grill and I have no idea why. Anyway, sorry. Some of us might look at another artist and not only want to be where they are, but experience a lot of jealousy and and hateration. Because I think envy is fine. I mean, I know we're not supposed to stay in envy, but it's it's sort of a natural reaction. Um, it's when you stay in it and you start hating because of your envy that that's a problem. But so a lot of us can't get out of that space of negativity and envy and 
self-deprecation. Others of us can celebrate other authors' successes, um, other artists' successes, you know, other business owners' successes, and be happy for that person and want them to do well, but also feel as though what we're doing is insignificant. And so while we're happy for that person and we support that person's art, we want to see our careers blow up that way or our businesses blow up that way. And I think I've been experiencing a lot of that for the past couple of days, not really the past week, but the past couple of days. And so the space that I'm in right now, and I'll get back to this after um, I go over my actual milestones for the week, but the place that I'm in right now is just trying to recenter myself in my own standards, in my own achievements, comparing myself not to other people, but to who I was yesterday and the day before, and even you know six months ago, a year ago, 10 years ago, and just trying to celebrate that, basically. So it's not easy. It's not an easy thing to do. It's not an easy, easy journey to take, but I'm going to try to get recentered in all of that. I think what's compounding my experience emotionally is that I am feeling a sense of isolation and not creative isolation, actually, because I think I do have collaborators and partners with whom I can create and with whom I can share community on a professional and creative and artistic level. But um, being that I don't really know many people at all in Tucson and my family is kind of far away, it's just very hard in general to connect just to people in, in general. Like pretty much I walk the street and all I see is strangers, basically, or strangers rather. And... Uh, um, that can be pretty isolating and lonely. And so I'm trying to manage that um, and see what I can do for myself personally, because self-care is important, right? What I can do personally to rectify this feeling of me being an island. And this is, again, less about my creative community and just more about my personal community. I find myself missing my friends and my family quite a lot because again, it's really just me here you know, with my kid. And um, in a lot of ways, it's it's a great way to focus on self and meditate and really dig into what it is you want and your future, your, your goals and your dreams. But I do need that social interaction with people that I love and that I care about a lot more often than I am able to get it. So I'm basically, I think, struggling with both of those things sort of at the same time and it's just compounding um, all of my emotions and reactions into like a bigger thing. So if I feel to you guys a little bit muted today, a little bit more toned down, that's the reason why. And you know, I'm working through it. I'm trying to smile through it, tease, you know, um, and also trying to look at the good side. And speaking of the good side, let's actually get into what I actually got done last week. So first of all, one of the great things that I have been doing for myself is um, (laughs) I've taken up this challenge, finally, of me trying to literally write every day and trying my best to hit a total of 3,000 words a day. I haven't been able to hit that thus far, and... I've only really been able to hit a maximum of almost 1,300 words a day. I'm looking at my writing calendar right now. Almost 1,300 words a day, which averages out to about, you know, some days vary, you know, but across the week, I was averaging about 1,100 words per day, which is nice. That's like 33, 34% of the way there, but I really would like to try to get to 3,000, if not at least 2,000. Because what that means is that at the end of this month, if I'm able to maintain momentum at 2,000 words a day, I will have written 62,000 words, which means I would have pretty much finished hollow point. Yay! Finally, which is my goal. If I maintain a momentum of about 1,100 words per day, that's you know around 33 plus thousand words that I would have finished by the end of the month, which is also great. And actually could also in and of itself bring me to the end of hollow point. Um, I think I need to write probably 30,000 
to 50,000 more words max and um, just be plugging at that every single day. But what I found is that even though I'm aiming for these goals, I get really easily distracted. So sort of, I sort of wonder sometimes if I have some kind of form of ADHD or something like that, because as focused and as driven and as um, many credentials as I have, and just as like hardworking as I am, it's very hard for me to focus on one particular thing for any more than about two hours at a time max. And writing for me takes a lot of spiritual and emotional and mental energy because for me personally, when I'm really in the zone, I am literally there in the story world watching it unfold in front of me and basically just being the archivist or, you know, the reporter on the stories. And I don't know. I mean, this is just going to sound kind of freaky and weird, so just bear with me. But it's kind of a lot of hard work to build an entire reality that you spend time in a couple of hours a day and that you are desperately trying to capture every single detail of. It's kind of like dreaming in a very lucid state. And then because you can't really type while you're dreaming, really, unless you dream about typing but then having to get up and then for the next two hours recreate that entire dream in your mind and transcribe it. And the more you practice it, the the easier it gets and the faster you get. But I basically, because I'm trying to make this a daily practice, I really do want this to um, become a daily practice and help me to increase my word count. And I realized at the same time though that the energy that it takes for me to write is significant. And I didn't realize that before. I didn't understand why I would need, like, say, an entire week away from a manuscript in the middle of first draft form. I didn't understand why there were certain scenes that were so hard for me to get back into. Um, And that's just because it it just takes a lot of energy. And and a lot of things in my novels that I write are, like, emotionally charged and kind of heavy. Even though they have like comedy and awesome action and magic and monsters and, you know, love and sex and sultriness and all the cool things that make a novel an exciting genre novel. It has all those things. But jumping back into like a dystopian where you feel like you're inside of that dystopian world, it just feels kind of spiritually heavy. Aside from the woo-woo part of that, uh, it's just hard for me, again, to focus hardcore on just one story through and through. And sometimes I do have to give my mind a break and switch to another story. So even though this week I wrote almost 6,700 words, I actually wrote exactly 6,691 words, which is great. If I keep up that pace, I'll have almost 25,000 words done at the end of the week, at the end of the month. But um, of that almost 6,700 words, almost 5,000 of those were for Hollow Point. And Hollow Point is looking wonderful and great, you know, thus far. I always feel really happy about the direction. Um, that's going. Actually, that's not true. Not always, but recently I felt very happy about it. And yet, and still, I still needed to just switch my mind frame into like a different space, into a different world. And so, um, you know, 1,200 plus, actually almost 2,000 of those words that I wrote were for this um, asylum series. And so, yeah. It's just kind of hard for me to stay drenched in something super duper long. And I realized that about myself this past week. And so I started to wonder how I would be able to finish my projects. And I know that literally day by day by day and step by step by step, I would eventually end up finishing them. But I really just want to be able to, like a lot of other writers, sit down for like five hours and churn out 8,000 words a day. Like I would love to be able to do that. 
but I can't. It's just not in me because not only is it hard for me to stay into those heavy places, but I also have other things that I really enjoy doing aside from writing. Like I, I, I like to live. I like to make sure my environment is like a clean environment. I have like, I wouldn't say pretty strict, but I've actively integrated a brand new program of like self-care and exercise and um, eating healthily that requires my time and my attention. Like exercise takes anywhere from like 30 minutes minimum to about an hour maximum. Um, and then there's also like when you're eating healthily, you're not eating out that often. So you're cooking more often, which can also take anywhere between like an hour to two hours, depending on how often you cook, how much you cook, etc. And so I'm still trying to not only maintain that aspect of my life, but also find different ways to tweak it so that I can still get all the benefits of that lifestyle and of that perspective, but also not have to spend hours and hours on it. But in order to, (laughs) ironically, in order to lessen the amount of time that I have to spend on like cooking and self-care, I have to spend more time on it now to figure out the right systems that work for me. So I have to do that. Like to me, that's not negotiable anymore. My care and my health and my sleep and my exercise, you know, and my home cooked food, like those are not negotiable things. And so I need to focus on that in addition to being a writer. I also, as you guys know, am um, building the Bohemian Badass, rather rebuilding it and rebooting it and just building the website in itself takes a lot of time and energy, but I also am in the process of, you know, designing courses for the Bohemian Badass, you know, designing my coaching services that I've been telling you guys about for that that same brand. Also um, creating and maintaining and managing the blog content is taking a ton of time. Um, I'm just now finishing up the first four months of my editorial calendar and schedule for the Bohemian Badass, wherein I have planned pretty much every single blog post for every single day that a blog post is supposed to go out. And not only am I planning that, but I'm also planning, you know, free gifts for my audience, um, quizzes, little mini challenges, worksheets and workbooks. And that takes a lot of time to build, right? Um, And all these things are on top of just the logistics of running a business, doing accounting, making sure money is going in the right places, keeping track of things, um, responding to certain emails, looking for new business solutions. If there's like a software that I need, Um, or a service that I need, I have to make sure that I can find one that fits the business needs, but also one that I can afford. And doing that kind of research for your business and that kind of logistical management takes time. So there are a lot of things that I am dealing with in terms of um, my novel writing, my business building, my self-care and my health. And then of course, I'm also working on my TV writing program, not only finishing up my study of that, and trying to get most of that out the way for uh, before the summer is over. But then I'm also trying to, on top of learning about TV writing and synthesizing all that material, I'm trying to actually develop a TV series. And so trying to do those four things every single day in, you know, anywhere between it, I wouldn't say, my, my days are usually not eight hours. They're about, um, I would say at least 10 hours but usually anywhere around 15 or 16 hour days, if we're being really real. So trying to get those four things done in constant 16 hour days can be really heavy and hard. And I get up really early in the morning. So it takes a lot of dedication, a lot of effort and a lot of, you know, oomph. And I need to be able to refresh myself in some way by not spending too much time in one area at a time. Although the Bohemian Badass sometimes will take entire days for me to get, you know, um, a certain part of the website up or what have you, because I'm also designing it myself. These are all the things you kind of have to do as a business owner. Unfortunately, if you don't really have any help or you don't really have crazy amounts of extra income to spend on, designers and web developers and things like that. This is just what the hustle looks like. 
and I am on my hustle and on my flow, so, or I'm trying to be. So objectively looking at everything that I've done or that I'm doing on a day-to-day basis, like I should give myself a lot more credit, but I don't. And so that's why I labeled this podcast with um, the title Perfectionism, Punishment, and Staying in the Present, because that's essentially, those are, those three things are what I'm struggling with. You know, my crazy work ethic that pushes me towards this perfectionism that's essentially an unachievable goal just at heart. I'm trying to manage that. I'm also trying to not punish myself if I don't hit certain goals for the day, you know, Um because that's fine. Like today, for example, I wanted to get a lot more done, but a family member of mine who I love dearly really needed my assistance. And that took a good two to three hours out of my day. On top of that, I have to, you know, be a mom. And then on top of that, I had to do my own adulting, like cleaning up the house. And, you know, so today was not as productive career wise or writing wise, you know, that I, as I wanted it to be, but that's just how life goes. And I've been really trying not to beat myself up about it all day. And I've been pretty successful thus far, but it's just kind of crazy how deep the fight is to not criticize oneself for not being more perfect or not being more on point. So perfectionism and punishment are definitely things that I'm struggling with and definitely staying in the present is a big one for me because as I'm seeing all these other wonderful artists and authors who are getting their shine, who are working towards something bigger, you know, I'm comparing my present to their future, essentially, which I know sounds weird, but just bear with me. I say that I'm comparing my present to their future because a lot of these people in certain ways and for the past five years, 10 years, 20 years, have been preparing themselves for this very moment that I'm witnessing, wherein they blow up and their careers are being very successful. Um, A lot of the people that I admire most Um, in terms of media and entertainment, like Shonda Rhimes, J.J. Abrams, Joss Whedon, Ava DuVernay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, You know, also novelists like N.K. Jemisin. Those individuals had been working on not only their projects, but their craft, their networks, just everything in their lives for literal years before they were able to achieve their success. And so I'm witnessing the success in this moment, but this moment is the future that they had been working towards five, 10, 15 years ago. And so I have to remember that for me personally, my present can't compare to what their future is. Just like I know, I know in my heart that 10 years in the future, if I'm if I'm here, God willing, I might be experiencing some major, major breakthroughs that I started working on today, or I started working on five years ago when I first published, it hasn't even been five years actually, when I first published my first novels, you know? Um, and so I have to really keep in mind that my present doesn't necessarily match up to other artists present because other artists present situation is actually the future they've already been working towards and that's going to be the same thing that i experience in the future for myself but i'm just not there yet um i also believe too that what is meant for you will come especially if you're calling it in and you're working towards it and you believe just like one track mindedly that this thing is meant for you and you keep endeavoring towards it, I believe that you will get it. Um, I believe that whatever purpose you are here to fulfill and achieve, you will achieve it as long as you're searching for your purpose and you're able to discover that and then you're able to endeavor towards that purpose. Because I feel like if you're searching for your purpose, your purpose is also searching for you and you guys will eventually meet in the middle. That's my little foo-foo spiel, and it probably won't be the last one, obviously. Um, But I'm trying to keep myself motivated by reminding myself of all those things. And also just, again, by comparing my present to my past. I mean, I just became, like I told you guys uh, two podcasts ago, 
a bestseller, an Amazon bestseller in six different categories. I'm an independently published author, like self-published essentially, but like professionally self-published. And I was able to do that in the, as an independently published author, with, of course, with my co-writers with me. But still, like that's a major achievement. And I know that it's not the only achievement that is out there and others have done more than I have. And even people who have come into the industry, you know, just a month ago might hit their huge break in, you know, five or six months. And I'm still here grinding it out for the next five years. But that's their path and this is my path. And on my path, if I'm really honest with myself, And I look back on my achievements and I look back not only, you know, who I was five years ago, but just who I was like a month ago or six months ago. Different person. Maybe not, uh, maybe I'm not as, uh, as different as I was, um, as I, I, maybe I'm not as different now in July than I was in January, but I'm still different. Like, and my resume has grown significantly. My achievements have grown significantly. Um, I've hit certain milestones that I planned and I've hit other milestones that I had no idea I would ever even hit, you know? So that's really exciting. So I'm trying to keep myself in the present and also keep the present in context, you know? Um, And so those are the ways in which I'm trying to manage my bubbling sort of um, angst about my career and my progress. And it's, you know, this is an ongoing challenge. There are times when we as artists are completely happy with where we are and where where we've been and how far we've come. And there are other times when we're just like, damn, I really wish I could be up there you know, next to Stephen King. Why haven't my novels made it, made it yet? Or why haven't I been able to get a really boss ass noir cyberpunk um, you know, TV show on Netflix or whatever, you know? And I do believe in my gut that those things are coming from myself, my company, and my properties. But again, I have to really keep it everything in perspective, keep grinding out every day, and then also be gentle with myself when I don't hit a particular goal. Because if you're already feeling tired, if you're already feeling like you put your all into it, so you're tuckered out, if you're already feeling as though you could have done more and you don't feel at the top of your game because of those things, why make your feelings about yourself worse by adding shame to that? You know what I'm saying? Anyway, that's my little spiel. Let me get back to really quickly the other things that I achieved this week. And um, again, if I'm looking all across the screen, it's because I'm looking at two different... um, Two different screens right now. Not screens, but two different windows right now. Um, I did a little dramaturgy, uh, just a teeny bit, because my two playwrights have been officially accepted into our 10-minute play festival in the fall. So yay! I'm super excited for them. I'll make some more official announcements as the production itself draws near. But um, that's pretty exciting, and I am happy to have had a dramaturgical hand in bringing voices of color to the stage in Arizona. I mean, for me, that's huge, and that's really significant, and I'm happy about it Um, for them and for Arizona, because I feel like Tucson is very blessed to have these voices that they get to experience. But that's just my opinion. Um, So I did a little bit of that, and... um, it sort of reminded me a little bit that graduate school is coming back in like six weeks almost. And to be really honest with you guys, as a quick side note, I am a little bit anxious about that. I think that's also maybe a part of my little angsty attitude lately is that I know school, so FYI, school starts on Monday, August 20th. And so literally in... The next week, like as of next Monday, I will have a month, maybe a month and like four days left of my summer vacation and my summer break. And I'm a little nervous about it, honestly, because despite how I'm feeling right now about my past progress in the past week, working for myself and taking care of myself, loving myself, Um, giving myself positive feedback, working on all of my projects and doing the things that I want to do 
has been such a restorative experience for me. And graduate school, just, and it's not just like mine in particular, but just the structure and the nature of graduate school in general can feel very disarming. And I'm afraid of being disarmed of all of my um, positive tools that I've put into my creative and personal and spiritual toolbox. And I am afraid that I will be in an anxious and not so great place when school starts because of the experiences that I had in the spring semester. So that is something that's kind of sitting at the very bottom of my gut. And I'm trying to manage it. But I know for a fact for me that the closer I get to going back to my to to um to my um graduate school schedule, the more unsettled I feel. And that should tell me a lot about my saga and my journey thus far. But I think that I still need some time to think about what all this means because I think there are a lot of things about graduate school that I've really, really enjoyed and that I've loved. And there are other things about it that I really do not enjoy and I do not love. And it's very hard for me to parse out what from what right now because I'm in the middle of it. But around this time next year, after I've done some more thinking and journaling and and, and analysis on this um, internally, I'll understand more what exactly brought about the dread versus what exactly brought about the sunlight and the positivity with regard to graduate school. But um, having to do that, uh, that dramaturgical work of informing my playwrights of their acceptance was great in one aspect, but in another, it was very sobering, you know, kind of broke the dream bubble of um, freedom and (laughs) lack of, you know, being crazy that I've been able to develop for myself while on summer vacation. And I don't think I'm the only person who feels that way, honestly. So anyway, the good news on that front with graduate school is that I really only have, after our directing opportunity, Um, for our play festival is over in early October, I really only have one major class that I need to take on a weekly basis, my TA ship. And then um, most of the time I have is like relatively flexible. I wouldn't say free because I still have to do my, not only my TA ship, which is going to be really heavy, but also my master's thesis, which is going to be, I wouldn't say heavy, but there's a lot of work that needs to go into it. And I yeah, so, and I can't just make all of it just fun analytical work. I, I know I have to have some kind of scholarship in there, which is going to really eat away at my soul. But again, I'm trying not to think about all of that that's coming up, plus my comps. I have to do my comp exams during the winter. So, I mean, thinking about it, it's understandable why I personally feel as though uh, graduate school is kind of a scary proposition coming up in the next month and a half. But you know, when I get into it, I'm sure I'm going to rock it. At least I hope. <laughs> I'm just crossing my fingers. Um, so did dramaturgy. I also, um, like I told you guys, worked super hardcore on The Bohemian Badass. Specifically, I'm just going to look at what I did specifically. Because, um, gosh, I got so much done. So I finally got it signed up for my affiliate account at The Bohemian Badass, which is great. So um, that's been going really well. I'll be able to really promote the products that I really, really love and that I enjoy and that I use to my audience. And I'm really super excited about that Um, because not only will I be able to talk freely about these products and create entire like posts on them and courses around them and things like that, but also like me promoting these products will help me to like grow my blog presence and like my wallet, honestly, just to be really real. Um, I set up a lot of web pages, specifically for coaching services, like I told you guys. Um, Again, like I told you guys, I planned out, not only did I plan the first four months of the actual specific content for my blog, but I actually planned out the entire first year of my blog with regard to the monthly themes. So every single month there's going to be um, an artistic 
growth theme, but also a genre theme. So say um, come next January, for example, because it's the beginning of the year, the artistic growth theme is going to be about goal setting, setting up your artistic business, like all the logistics you need to know about setting up a brand or a business for yourself as an artist. Um, what else? Uh, inviting people into the Breaking Badass Challenge, will be, which will be a really awesome challenge that I'll be running early next year to help people break badass and help them go from zero and nothing, having nothing as an artist or an author or whatever to having a fully fleshed out brand online and a website and everything, a mission and everything like that um, by the end of that program. So that is the artistic growth theme of January. But then there's also a genre theme each month, which I haven't planned out for January yet, but it probably will be something like action and combat or something like that. Because January really is the time to like take action. Um, so as you guys can imagine, like for example, the genre theme for October is horror and specifically survival horror, obviously. But the artistic growth theme of October is going to be pretty much all about pre-writing and preparing essentially for NaNoWriMo, which is in November. So I'll be teaching people how to develop a character, how to develop plot and conflict, how to world build. And so that's a 30 day course as well. So there's a lot of planning that that went into the Bohemian Badass with regard to the blog content that I've been doing over the past week. So web design, services design, blog content, editorial calendar, filling in, it's just crazy. And I haven't even gotten to the social media schedule yet. So we'll see how that goes. Um, and I also, as I mentioned a little earlier, I am also planning out some really awesome info products. So that's been taking up a lot of my time this past week. This week, I'm going to probably put the Bohemian Badass to the side after today and focus more on catching up with my TV writing material because I don't want that to fall to the wayside and I don't want my crazy focus on different things to turn into shallow focus as opposed to deep focus. Um, oh, FYI for the Bohemian Badass, just to let you guys know, I've decided to push the opening date of the Bohemian Badass from August 1st to, Jul um, to July, to September 1st of this year. Um, mostly because, and I, this is just me, I'm a little superstitious, but um, Mars is in retrograde right now. Yes, I'm sorry, I'm a Cancer and I really love astrology and... Um, Actually, I see a lot of the energies and predictions actually showing up pretty hardcore in my life. So that's why I kind of um, adhere to the celestial movements of the universe. But Mars is in retrograde until August 27th. And um, so I'll be opening the Bohemian Badass on September 1st because the theory is, is that when Mars, which is like the planet of like um, not fire, it's not a planet actually made of fire, but it's associated with energy, with fire, with initiative, with ambition, with leadership, with success, with businesses. So I want to make sure that I am opening up the Bohemian Badass in the best, like, let's say, celestial and astrological light possible. Um, and that would be after Mars goes from being retrograde into being direct, where I have that fiery energy behind the grand opening of the Bohemian Badass. Say what you want. I don't care what you think, how, how ridiculous it sounds to you. Um, but that's just what I've decided to do. And plus, it's also given me some more time to just polish things up. Because technically, I could open the Bohemian Badass now if I wanted to. There's enough on there where I feel as though I can just open it and just, you know, develop it more along the way. Because at some point, you you can perfect it and develop it and perfect it. And then at some point, you just have to pull the trigger. You know, it's never going to be perfect and you just need to open your business and start your blog or whatever and then just develop it more as it goes along. Um, and I could do that now. 
but I've just decided just to take the opportunity of giving myself another month on top of July um, where I can be in a more quote unquote perfect position, but then literally definitely the blog will be opening September 1st, no more pushbacks. So I swear to you, this is not a case of me being perfect this time or being a perfectionist. This is really just me being superstitious and like trying to use astrological and universal energy to the best benefit of the business. But it just so happens that it allows me to be more in my perfectionist state. So that's basically that for the Bohemian Badass. One final announcement before I go. The Camille, which is the story that was included in the 2054 anthology, will be coming out before the end of July as an individual story for purchase with its own cover. And then following shortly after that, the Camille will also have its own audiobook as well. And then, of course, I'll be doing a paperback version. But I'm not going to do a paperback version of the Camille until I have essentially solidified that first entry because honestly guys even though a preliminary version of the camille is coming out in july this july i will probably end up rewriting it not completely but you know taking out certain things and adding in other things as i develop the camille into an entire serialized novel because as i mentioned to you guys before the camille is essentially the first episode of a 10 episode series, season, whatever you want to call it. And so there will be essentially five installments of 10 episodes each. And once the every once I have all the episodes of a particular season written, I will then not only sell those episodes individually, but I'll also sell the episodes together into one volume. Um, into one seasonal volume, um, which will, you know, have its own cover or what have you. So the structure of the Camille has been worked out in my mind. And because of that structure, I might have to rewrite the first episode because there are certain things that I want to give away in the episode. There are other things that I need to take away. There are certain, you know, plants I have to put in the first episode that will be paid off later in the series or in the season. You know what I'm saying? So you guys know me. I'm a serious plotter, like to a default, to a fault and a default. <laughs> um, and so I won't be publishing the Camille in any sort of permanent paperback form until I know for a fact that episode one is not going to be changing, if that makes sense. Because once you publish a paperback on Amazon or CreateSpace, it pretty much stays out there forever, even when you remove it from sale. And I just want to make sure that when I publish it the first time, I kind of want to get it right. So as a matter of fact, for you guys, I mean, I might not even publish the entire paperback until the entire first season is written. I mean, I can't even, I can't tell you when the paperbacks for each of the episodes will be out. But I can tell you that the preliminary story as it is, and the preliminary audiobook as it is, will be out um, before the end of July, for sure. So that's basically that, guys. Thank you for sitting with me, sitting, you know, just next to me and listening to me as I kind of mull over the higher ph philosophical questions of being an artist. Because I know at some point, if you guys are actually artists or authors or filmmakers or what have you, you're gonna be asking yourself these questions as well. And so I hope that at the very least, if I didn't give you any solutions, I was able to show you guys that it's okay to be stuck occasionally. It's okay to have self-doubt. It's okay to sort of meander and wander and wonder about who you are as an artist and where your career is going. I would just encourage you guys to just, while honoring that part of yourself and honoring that confusion and ambiguity that you try to eventually find your way out of that and keep pushing forward no matter what it is you're doing. So that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm going to try to go and get some rest and treat myself well because I need it. And, you know, before I have to go pick up my kid and I hope that you guys are out there just kicking ass, staying badass, staying creative, and of course, staying indie. All right. So I will see you guys this time next week. I promise, you know, 
And um, again, in the meantime, just keep pushing and keep creating. All right. Bye.